personal finance practice problem using Excel. Balance sheet accounts and accounting equation problem number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're down here in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. We have the information on the left-hand side. Going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. Working with our balance sheet accounts. This time having both account categories with some actually accounts within those categories. Remembering that as we look at the balance sheet, we are in essence looking at our accounting equation, which classically from an accounting standpoint would be assets equal liabilities plus equity, or in this case, we're going to call it net worth. Or we can rewrite that, which is often the case for individuals and in finance kind of speak, which would be assets minus liabilities equals the net worth. Remember that this first one is useful when we do actual financial transactions because we have our balancing kind of equation in this format. The assets representing what we have, liabilities and equity, who has claim in essence to those assets. The second one, of course, being easy and transparent to see kind of our net worth or where we stand, which would be calculated as assets minus liabilities plus equity. We're going to be then taking that accounting equation, putting it into a vertical kind of standpoint. Assets minus liabilities will equal equity down on the bottom. We're going to use some subcategorizations as we go through this and use some standard kind of financial formatting to do this. So first, let's look at what we have on the left-hand side, and let's try to categorize these first by simply assets or liability accounts, and then we'll go into some further subcategorizations for them. So this first one's a money market account. We're going to say that's an asset account, pretty liquid type of asset account. So I'm going to right-click on it. And then I'm going to hit the little bucket up top and I'm going to make that green. I'm going to make the asset accounts green. A mortgage. So I'm assuming that's a mortgage that we owe. So that's going to be a red account or let's make it orange. I'm going to hit the bucket this time up top in the font group, home tab, font group, bucket. Let's make that orange. We got the retirement account. I'm assuming that's our retirement savings account, which I'm going to make that a green one. So we'll go to the bucket up top, make that a green item. Then we have medical bills. Now, medical bills is a little bit tricky here because it's not really a balance sheet account. If you think about medical bills, they must have been bills that happened over a certain time period. So you're usually t thinking about kind of like an income statement account there. So I'm going to say that's not, yeah, that's not on the balance sheet. And then this one says the checking account. That's typically going to be a balance sheet account, an asset type account. So I'm going to select that, right click, make it uh, green. And then we got the credit card balance which is what we owe typically. So I'm going to select that and right click on it. And I'm going to make that orange. So if we were just to kind of create a balance sheet from scratch, these are some categories, common categories that we would be thinking of. And then we can compile this together. Note that a lot of times you might be thinking about other things like your car and your TV and whatnot. And these kind of things are important and they give value. But they're, they're not the kind of things that are going to help you with the day-to-day -day transactions typically because you're not going to be selling your TV in order to you know buy something, hopefully, unless you have to, generally. So to have the kind of financial information there that's going to be growing and whatnot as you go is really kind of what your main focus will generally be. And then you can think about adding things like you know the couch and, the, and all, the, all the kind of personal assets as well, even though those things can be difficult to value after you've already purchased them, right? After you have them and over time they depreciate and so on and so forth. So in any case, let's start up up top and we're going to say assets. Now I'm going to have some subcategories of the assets this time. So, so I'm going to make this top asset a dark green account, selecting the whole column up top, going to the home tab. I'm going to go to the font group. I'm going to make this green and this will be kind of a gaudy, colorful thing. So it might not, some people might not like that. Some other people might like it a lot, but that's, you know, we're going to try to use our color coding here. So I'm going to go to this. I'm going to make this this dark green down here. And then I'm going to also make the text white. So I'm going to go to the home tab font group, the text. I'm going to make it white so that it kind of stands out. And then we're going to go to the liquid assets. So we're going to have liquid assets. Now, if you were to think about the business kind of rules, it would be usually current assets versus long-term assets and then property, plant, and equipment, which would be like machinery and stuff like that. So here we're going to call it liquid assets. If you're comfortable with the term current assets, you could use that as well. The essence here being anything that I'm, it's going to be fairly liquid, 
that I can basically convert into cash, in essence, quickly so I can spend it to pay off the current liabilities, like the bills, like the credit card bill. That's what's going to go up into this subcategorization. So that would include the money market account. But I'm also going to make it, uh, I want the checking account is usually our first one, right? So that's the one I would usually put on top. It's going to be an order of liquidity. The most liquid thing is your checking account, typically. So I'm going to say this is equal to the checking account. I'm going to try to make a subcategory now of our of our asset colorings here, the, the liquid assets. I'm going to select these ones thus far, right click on them. And I'm not going to make them that dark green, but I'm going to make them this lighter green. So that's going to be our liquid assets. And then I'm going to indicate with a colon. That means that this is a subcategory of the liquid assets. I'm going to pull them into the inside. I'm going to indent down here another category uh, determination that it's a subcategory, home tab, alignment, indent. These are common types of things that you'll see within the financial statements. If you have these conventions down, you'll be able to create and read financial statements easier, meaning you'll be able to create something that both you and someone else can read more easily and you'll be able to hopefully read what other people put together in terms of financial statements oftentimes more easily as well as your eye gets used to these kind of conventions. So then I'm going to say this, this will be equal to, I'm going to scroll on over to the checking account and pick that one up. There it is, the 1,100. I'm going to make, that one's already the nice green we have here. Then we got the money market. That's also going to be a current asset. So I'm going to say that's pretty liquid. If it's in a money market, I can spend it if I need to. So I'm going to say this equals left, 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 up, up, up to 3,500. Let's indent here by going to the home tab, alignment, and indent. Let's make this our green by selecting it, home tab, font group, and make that green. Now the next one we have is the retirement account. That I would expect to be long term. That might be something that we have in a 401k plan. It might be something we have in an IRA, meaning I can't take it out without being penalized. So I, it's there. I could take it out if I have to but I'll be subject to penalties. Therefore, it's pretty restricted. And I don't want it in my current assets because I don't want to be using that to pay off my current liabilities. So I'm going to end this subcategory by saying this is the liquid, let's call it total. This is total liquid assets. I'm going to indent that two times, indicating that I finished off this subcategory, putting that then into the, the outer column, home tab, alignment, indent, and then indent again. And then I'm going to underline here, home tab, font, underline. And let's sum this up using our trusty sum function in the outer column now. Equals the SUM, shift 9. I'm going to do this with the keyboards this time. Up arrow, left arrow, holding down shift, up again, E4 colon, E3 colon, E4, and enter. There we have it. I'm going to make this one green as well. Selecting it, home tab, font group, making it green. Now then we got we can call this long-term assets or non-current assets, right? So we might have the or non-liquid assets. So we got the liquid assets. I'm going to call these non-liquid assets, in other words, long-term assets, assets that I cannot take out readily easily, which could include most likely things like a retirement account or something like that, investments that are there for the long term, things that I do not want to or cannot use short term to pay off the current liabilities and then you might have another category which is an in essence property planting equipment meaning fixed assets the other stuff household goods cars things like that which are tangible type of things that depreciate over time so but this would be another kind of investment thing typically and i'm going to call it i'm going to give it a subcategory non uh, liquid assets colon now, there's only one of them, so there's two ways you could do this. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the retirement account. And you could simply put that in the outer column because it's the only non-liquid asset that you have, that we have at this time. I'm going to use the same convention of having two categories, even though it's somewhat redundant, so that we can have a total column and, and see the total. So this is going to be equal to the 95. I'll pull it into the inside, and then I'm going to have the total non-liquid liquid liquid assets and pull that into the outer column which is the same number equals the same number or sum the same number but there's only one number and there we have it now a lot of times when you have only one number in a category they might just take that one number and put it into the outer column and leave it at that so you may not see or you don't need to have this double redundant thing but to keep the convention sometimes it's easier to do it this way so i'm going to select these two I'm going to go to the home tab alignment indent here. 
I'm going to select this entire thing. I'm going to go to the Home tab, Font Group. I'm going to make this a different green this time. Let's make it this green right here. So I'm going to make it this green. Hopefully you have that green. So it's a, a little bit different. So we have that as a different color. And then I'm going to say this one. Let's make that that same Home tab, Font, make it that green as well. And then we're going to have then, this is going to be the total non liquid what well, I already did that that is the total we already have it let's just underline it here underline and this is the total assets total assets that's what we want outer column now I'm just going to sum up the outer column which is these two subcategories notice I'm only summing up one column at a time in this convention I'm never going to be doing things where I'm going to say I'm going to add this number and then like this number over here in two separate columns I'm either adding one column on the left to get to this one this one has a number above it Therefore, I'm only adding the numbers above it. So it's going to be equal to the sum of these two. Although there's blank cells here, don't let that bother you to use the sum function. It's probably the best function to use, although you could just add one plus the other. But I typically would use the sum function when you can. Then we're going to go to the Home tab, Font Group, and Underline. I'm going to make this that same dark green to indicate that's the total Home tab, uh, Font Group. And then this little bucket, make that the dark green. And then I'm also going to make it white, home tab, font group, meaning the text white. So again, you can see it's kind of gaudy with the color, kind of kind of messy with the color. A lot of colors going on. So you may or may not like that. But we're going to continue with the color coding. So this one, now we got liabilities. Liabilities. And I'm going to make this like a dark orange because it's kind of the red stuff. So we're going to go to the home tab, font group. But red's too intense. It's too intense. So I got to go with the dark orange here. And then we're going to go to, so that's right there. That's the orange. And then I'm going to go to the font group and make it white. Because that's kind of a dark color. So there we have that. And then we got the liabilities where we have the credit card. That's the current one. So there's only one current one. I'm going to make a subcategory, which is current, current liabilities, liabilities, colon. And then there's only one of them. So once again, I'm going to say equals. You could put this into the outer column here and, and just leave it as is instead of having a subcategory. But I'm going to follow the convention. So you can kind of see the convention if we had multiple categories, which would be to bring it into the inner column and then say that we had total current liabilities in the outer column equal in this case to that same number. I'm going to put an underline here, font group underline let's make an indentation for these two font group alignment indent let's indent this one again home tab alignment indent and then we're going to select these make it a different orange font group i'm just going to start going to the font group by the way i'll stop to try to stop saying home tab unless we're in some something other than the home tab so font group bucket and then this is just going to be this one, this bright orange down here, which hopefully you can still see the numbers in it. And then, then we've got the, the long-term liabilities. Note that that current liability, same term as if you would have in normal kind of accounting or, or for-profit accounting, a business accounting, meaning there are things that are going to be due within a year. And then long-term liabilities, these are things that are going to be due out past a year and that's going to be including the mortgage the mortgage up top now remember the this is where it gets kind of tricky because that mortgage is being paid off monthly most likely and that means there is a current portion to it but usually you, you kind of want to put the mortgage down here even though there's a current portion because it's going to be huge compared to the rest of your your liabilities so you want to you want to have it broken out so you can tell what's going to be doing the short term and the long term. And then you're going to have to either make adjusting entries periodically to, to show the current portion of the mortgage, the mortgage that's due within a year, or at least just understand that in your normal kind of bookkeeping process that you got your current liabilities and then part of the mortgage is current. So that's kind of just an accounting problem that there's no real fix for except for doing periodic adjustments if you so choose to do that. So then we're going to say the mortgage is going to be equal to uh, this one, we're going to pull it into the inner column again. Once again, even though it's only like one number in this category, this is going to be the total long term liability liabilities, pulling that to the outer column equals that one of uh, 70,000. I'm going to select this whole thing, but making that a different orange 
home tab font group bucket here making that let's make that a lighter orange like this one let's make it like that's too close let's make it this one so i can make a difference okay and then i'll do that up here too make that one different okay and so then we can underline we can go to the underline here underline there and that'll give us our total liabilities total total liabilities liabilities which is going to be equal i'm going to use the trusty sum again sum shift nine which is going to be the outer columns i'm only summing up the outer column here notice i'm only doing one thing to one column at a time i'm not jumping from column to column let's do some indentations that i missed here so let's select these two home tab alignment indent this one home tab alignment indent and i wasn't going to go to the home tab anymore but there it is and then this last one i'm going to make it similar to the total up top with the color coding home tab font group let's make that that dark orangish reddish color and then home tab font group and making it white black and white so there were not black and white orange and white or something so there's the liabilities then we're going to have the total the net worth this is going to be the net uh, worth and i'm going to take then the total assets which you could also double underline which is common which is in the font group double underline here and then double underline on, under this one and also we could have brought this out to one more category out so that i'd be working with with these two numbers in a separate column just so you could show what that looks like like you might you know pull this one out although the the table gets quite long when you do that because this is kind of another subcategory and you can pull these outside and then you would just be uh, taking a look at the subtraction of the outer column but i'm going to keep that inside here it's just so it doesn't get too wide of a calculation and this is going to be equal to our assets minus our liabilities so you got to kind of work around these other numbers because we didn't create another column for it that's your aesthetical choice in terms of the, your formatting of your worksheet it's a negative number what that means i have more liabilities than assets yeah you got that my net worth is negative i'm negative net worth i'm worth less than zero and that's what it shows right but obviously we don't have the home up top so that doesn't really make a whole lot you know so we're missing some things here but just note here with the stuff we have we're going to say this is it, it is possible to have a net worth of less than zero we're going to go home tab font group and we're going to make this then our blue so there we have that but again we're probably we're probably missing some of the you know we didn't we don't have you know, clearly there should be a home up top if there's going to be a mortgage involved here so note we're just working with the content that we have on the left side that's also a problem note down here when you calculate the net worth because what we did here is we basically just compiled together the assets that we have and then took the net worth of subtracting them out instead of doing the accounting records and using the accounting records to basically compile the net worth as we do the data input meaning on a transaction by transaction basis so just subtracting this out gives us kind of a double check but it's not really a double check because the double entry accounting system isn't really in effect because all we're doing is subtracting out assets minus liabilities whereas if we were to tie that out into the income statement and tie that out as we actually do data input that's when the double entry system actually gives you kind of that double check so once again you're most likely not at a, at a net loss of, of the negative 71 because we probably have the assets up top including what we're looks like we're missing right now the fixed assets property plant and equipment including the home and other kind of you know fixed assets tvs and and that kind of stuff but realize that when you're entering this into the you know accounting software and you're kind of using that to to see where your spending needs to be in the future those fixed assets don't don't help you a whole lot because you're although they're valuable the fact that your home goes up and down over time or the fact that your tv goes down over time normally or your car is going down over time usually isn't going to affect your your actual decision making process from a day-to-day -day purpose because you're living in the home I mean, the home is something on there where you might, you know, consider taking a loan out on it in the future and whatnot. But generally, you're living you're living in the home, so you're not really thinking about it as a as an investment that's that you're going to be pulling money out of, at least not in the short term, unless you put it into your, like part of your retirement planning stuff. But in the normal kind of assets like your car and that kind of stuff is not something that you're really planning on selling. 
or liquidating. So it's not something that you're going to be comparing from your current assets to your current liabilities. And also those types of assets, your, your home being the outlier because it should go up in value, hopefully, if property values go up. But things like cars, things like furniture and whatnot, it's clearly going to go down in value. And when you put it on the books, you would then need to depreciate it to really get a, a sense of what your net worth is. So if, if you when you're doing things in terms of a functionality standpoint, then oftentimes it's useful to get get the get your investment activity on there, including your, you know, your checking accounts, your investment accounts, your retirement accounts, those things that are earning money on the asset side of things. And then on the liability, of course, what's what's you're actively owing and the things that you're paying off, the things that are going to have a cash flow impact in the future so that you can manage, of course, the cash flow impact when you're doing things for like applying for a loan or something like that. Or if you have if you have other needs that you're putting the financial statements together, then you might have to get it, get more detailed on the appraisals on the other type of assets, you, what kind of car you have, what kind of stuff, you know, home home stuff you have in in there as well in order to set up those uh, those type of things but those types of things again you don't know exactly what they're worth because you bought them a while ago and they depreciate over time so you're going to be having to estimate the value for those type of uh, assets